Once upon a time, far, far away, there was a land where everything was fixed exactly the same all the time, and nobody changed anything. Nobody wanted to change the world, and nobody repurposed objects for new reasons, and nobody needed to, because there was a king, and the king provided whatever you needed. And everything was so fixed, in fact, that even people's hands were fixed into one shape and they didn't move. <laughs> and that was okay, because if you needed to eat, the king provided a utensil and the utensil snapped onto your hands and you could eat with the utensil as long as you held your hands in the right shape. And if you wanted to take a walk through the forest and you needed a walking stick, no problem, that was also provided. And it snapped right on. And if you needed to learn about something, well then, there was a book on every subject that you ought to be learning about. And if you needed to learn more about something, there's no need to get experience with the actual world. There is a model. The king provided a model. You could just interact with the model. And one more thing. There's no art and no music except provided by the king. Well, everything was great and people were very happy because everything worked until one day when a rebel was born. <laughs> and, and it wasn't just one rebel, because another rebel was born, and then another, and then there were hundreds of rebels, and, and rumors started to spread. How can you tell if your child is a rebel? <laughs> well, first thing to look for, how do they eat with their utensil? Do they leave their hand in the same shape all the time? Or do they change the shape <laughs> of their hand? <laughs> reforming it and making it into a utensil of their own. Second, when they're walking through the forest, do they use the walking stick provided by the king or do they pick up a stick off the ground, taking Mother Nature's gift and make, giving it a new purpose not originally intended to help them walk? Also, when reading books and looking at models, did they learn what they were supposed to learn? Or did they think of the book and the model as whatever they wanted to think of them as, combining them, making something new out of them, <laughs> causing something to happen, <laughs> turning it into a catapult? <laughs> well, these children were not always young. They grew up, and they grew up, and there was a lot of them, and they started a movement and it was called the Maker Movement. Now, the Maker Movement would gather people together and they would think about how to change the world. And they gathered together in lots of different ways, sometimes in dark lairs, kind of like this theater right here. And when they gathered together, they would teach people things and teach each other things and think of how to change the world, and they would always start with the hands. Fixed like this, they would say, let's try changing our hands. Everybody try this. If you need a fan from the king, let's not get the fan from the king. Let's make a fan with our hands. Everybody try this. Now fan your face. OK, great. Now, if we need a massage chair from the king, we don't need that anymore. We can just turn our hands into massage implements and massage ourselves and massage the back of the person in front of you. OK, and now, great, there's one thing that was not provided by the king was a bullhorn. That's okay, we can make a bullhorn, make a cone shape with your mouth, put it up to your mouth, and on the count of three, say, I can change the world. One, two, three. I, I can, can change, change the world! world. Okay. <laughs> now, that's not the only thing they did. They also gathered in the forest. Because the king said, maybe they can change their hands, but, but they can't change the way that Mother Nature works, and they can't, they can't make art out of, out of just anything. They need the king's art. So they gathered in the forest, and they put together parts of nature to make new parts. They tied leaves to sticks using blades of grass. They sorted leaves by their hue color to form rainbow spectrums, and they stuck twigs in between trees. And this is the kind of art they would make. And this was art they made themselves. They used bark and sticks and twigs and mushrooms. And the king was getting frustrated with this. So he said, 
okay, maybe they can make art from nature, but they can't make music, and they still need the king's objects provided to them. So they said, well, let's make music out of the objects the king provides to us. And we'll make a special magical circuit, and we'll teach everybody how to make the circuit. And when you attach this circuit on to one of the king's objects, it becomes a musical instrument. And this is how it worked. You could thumbtack the circuit into a pencil provided by the king, and it would become, sound please, a musical instrument. And you could draw music on paper with this musical instrument. And that's not the only thing you could attach to. You could attach to any everyday object. Anything the king gave you that had a single purpose no longer became a musical instrument. <laughs> and all over the land, people repurposed mushrooms as organs, hula hoops as musical loopers. They made straws into trombones. They turned knives into what they called synthesis slicers. <laughs> and even puppets were not safe. All musical instruments. So the king was at his end, and he said, I've got to see what these people are doing. So he dressed up like a normal person, and he went down to where he knew the makers met in their secret lair, and he joined these rebels, and he sat there, and they revealed some things to him. First, they revealed their motto. And this is what it looked like. The whole world is a creativity kit, they told him. <laughs> you can change the world to be any way you want, and you can give new purpose to the existing things in the world. You can give meaning, you can designate meaning based on your inspirations. And you know, he didn't expect to like what he heard, but he did. And then they revealed one more thing to him. They said, everybody who is a maker is on a secret portrait, and I have that portrait right here. And if you are on this portrait, then you too are one of them. <laughs> and they showed it to him. <laughs> and they said, anyone who wants to be a maker and anyone who wants to change the world can. Well, so the king picked up two knitting needles from a nearby table, and he started to knit with a blue and purple thread of yarn. And this is what he made. The end. <laughs> okay. So I was inspired to give this talk based on the maker movement, and um, the pictures from nature were of a workshop that I ran in New Hampshire with, actually with some unschoolers um, at a camp that I'm a part of every year. And the video was of a DIY kit that I put out to turn musical instruments, uh, every, everyday objects, into musical instruments. And, um, and now uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to reveal uh, for the first time uh, ever in public a new DIY kit that we call Makey Makey. I say we because it's myself and Eric Rosenbaum primarily working on it, uh, who spoke earlier today. And Makey Makey is like duct tape between the internet and everyday objects. And here's the way that it works. You go onto the internet and you basically dumpster dive for content. You type something into Google, you type piano in, you click on the first result, you get a piano because it's all out there. Everything's out there. Then you connect it with a wire to some object in the everyday world. <laughs> Thank you. Another example of how this works, this is just a video game we found online. It's a parkour game where you run on buildings. So here we're taking paper and making a foot switch. Paper's not conductive, so we just dip it in water, and then we attach an alligator clip to it, and then we tape the paper to the shoe, and then we have a foot switch that we made. It takes about a minute. This is not a special video game that we made. This is just a video game that exists on the internet. 
And you don't have to install any special software, and you don't have to know any hardware except how to alligator clip two things together. You just plug it in and start going with any computer, with any operating system. Here's another example. If you go online and find some Pac-Man game or something, you can draw your own controller to use, and you can actually use the drawn controller to play it. So here in this example, we dumpster dived on the internet for Pac-Man by typing it into Google. And now by actually touching the pencil draw lines on the paper, we can control Pac-Man. Um, so um, this is currently a prototype, and um, it's going into production. And what I want to tell you about that I'm really proud of and excited about is that the circuit will be totally open source, which means you can find out how to use it. It'll be Creative Commons licensed, so you can use parts from it and use the support materials. And if you uh, want to get your hands on it, it'll be uh, ready in a couple months. Thank you.